my pleasure to introduce our summit host and master of ceremonies, Tom Rue. Tom serves as the president and CEO of the North Carolina Idea Foundation. I've been fortunate to get to know him through the Governor's Entrepreneurship Council. NC Idea is an independent private foundation that helps North Carolinians realize their entrepreneurial potential. They do this with competitive grants, some of which were just announced. We've had a big week this past week. Um, also, well, really focused on creating jobs, generating tax revenue, or raising capital. NC Idea also funds organizations around the state that serve the unique needs of entrepreneurs in their communities. In many ways, the summit is a natural outgrowth of NC Idea's ecosystem efforts, and it was only natural that they led this effort. Plus, we begged Tom to do so. <laughs> And speaking of leading, Tom has led NC Idea for nearly four years. He comes to North Carolina after an impressive career in entrepreneurship and economic development. As an entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist, Tom has worked to strengthen entrepreneurial ecosystems around the world. Prior to joining NC Idea, he worked for seven years at the Kauffman Foundation. The Kauffman Foundation is the founding sponsor of Global Entrepreneurship Week a week-long series of events happening around the world that officially kicks off today with our summit. Please help me welcome Tom to the stage. Thank you, Thank you Marianne, for that warm introduction and congratulations on a great victory. We are so psyched that uh, we have a mayor of one of the great cities of North Carolina that has an entrepreneurial mindset and understands what to do with it. So thank you for that. Um, yes, so welcome, everybody. Make sure my slides are working. What a gathering. Take a look around. Who would have thought a few months ago when we said, hey, maybe there's some interest in the state on how we can collaborate to do great things around entrepreneurship that so many people would take an interest. And of the people that took an interest that help us do this kind of thing, just remembered, I have a lav mic, so I don't have to speak into that microphone. <laughs> One of the, the groups of people that did so are sponsors. And I know it's polite at an event like this to thank your sponsors, and everybody does, and you, know, you can kind of guess who pays, the, you know, does the bigger check by the size of their logo. So there's, here's the ones that are in the print. Uh, but all kidding aside, these people, these organizations, you know what they did? They looked at what we were trying to do in its first year, right? This isn't our 10th year of doing this. This is the first time we did this. And they said, our values align with the ambition of this summit. And because they did so, I didn't have to flip the full bill. It still is expensive, but with their help and commitment, we pulled this off. So if you have a moment to see them, you know, today, tomorrow, in the resource fair, please extend them appreciation because we really needed their help to do this on such short notice. Speaking of people that I appreciate uh, more than the opportunities I get to, to brag on them is my staff. This is the best team in the country for economic development. No disrespect to colleagues at former organizations that I've worked at over the years, uh, but we've got the best crew right now. Um, as was mentioned by Marianne, we've been busy. Some of you may have heard the announcement just last week. Our fall cycle of seed grantees you know, started with 182 applications, goes through successive iterations, and with the help of a lot of people, our core review team, I see a bunch of you in the audience, with the help of these people, we continue the dreams and the journeys of six individuals. And just a week prior, we announced the 15 recipients of our microgrant, which is another, so in total per year, we'll do 30 of those and a dozen of the other $50,000 grants. These are people that are pursuing their dreams, strengthening the economy of North Carolina. So thank you for that. So why are we here? Why are you all here? Why do we presume to be worthy of your time, which is, after all, our pr most precious commodity, um, in a word, it's really about potential, specifically human potential. When we think about entrepreneurial ecosystem building, when we think about 
the term entrepreneurship, it has what I call a lot of positive brand confusion, right? People will generally have positive ideas about what entrepreneurship is, but it varies widely as to what is that. Is it a person that owns a gas station to is it Mark Zuckerberg, right, and everything in between. But what we look at it as and what it means to us is it's human potential, it's empowerment. It's people that are understanding and living lives of self-empowerment, which humanity benefits from. And if you want some you know, data to support that fact, and when we talk about human engagement and potential, I'd like to use uh, data from the Gallup Corporation. They do a worldwide engagement study. Over a million people around the world get surveyed. They've been doing this for multiple decades. And only in the US, only 34% of the population is actively engaged in their work. Think about that, because you, you can do the math on what the balance is, right? Only 34%. You know what we call those 34%? Those are the entrepreneurs in the organization. Sadly, 53% are not engaged. They ate and skate, right? You get a day's work for a day's pay, but these are your TGIFers. And more disturbingly, 13%, actively disengaged. That means they show up every day and do something against the interest of their employer. So if we were all a company right now, and there's roughly 500 people registered for the uh, summit, 50, 50-ish of y'all would be doing something against the interests of the common good. You know, you can be angry about that rightfully so, about everything that that means, but to me, I, I feel sorry for those people, right? Like what kind of a life of quiet desperation do you live if you're in that bottom percent? And the bigger question, how can we help you move from the bottom up? Because that's really what we're here to talk about. And there's our answer for that. It's all about an entrepreneurial mindset. And before everybody gets into that realm of what that means, I don't mean this in the context of starting a company, raising angel and venture capital, exiting at some point. That certainly is a path for some. And we're fortunate in the state of North Carolina to have a strong ecosystem to support that. We have great investors. We have great universities that crank out you know, lots of great ideas. We have that, but it's a tiny segment of what's the overall potential. And the entrepreneurial mindset is going to be the key to unlock that, because I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest natural resource that we have on the planet Earth is the entrepreneurial potential of people. It's more valuable than anything we can harvest from the sun or the wind or dig up from the ground. Because from data uh, provided by the Kauffman Foundation, only three out of every 1,000 people in this country start a new firm. Only three. Back in the day, we knew for, at, with Kauffman data that prior to the financial recession, on average, there were 600,000 new startups uh, in the country every year. And when you take new startups, less companies going out of business, the net difference was roughly 100,000 to the positive. So when startups and companies going out of firm converge and do even worse, which we've had for several years now, startups are actually at a lower rate than firms going out of business, that's our proverbial canary in the coal mine. That's what we have to look forward to, you know, five years, 10 years hence, on what the corporate environment's gonna look like. That's a problem. So we need to engage more people with this entrepreneurial mindset. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna start by making sure we have a common shared definition of an ecosystem. You know, we've co-opted this as an economic development term now to really mean the network, right? And I, I'm happy to tell you there are about 200 disparate organizations represented at this summit. That, if that gives you any indication how big our ecosystem is, let that just sink in. And by the way, we're just a fraction of what the, you know, the total is for the state. Next year, our goal should be to double the size of the number of people here because they exist. The other part I want to just take a crack at, we're not going to solve it today. This is going to be the beginning of a story and a journey, is how we define economic development, specifically through entrepreneurship. Because today, the way economic development works today You've all seen it, we read the stories, it's smokestack chasing, that's what it's affectionately referred to. And let me put a disclaimer before I upset 
a county official or somebody that does this attraction and retention uh, for their day job. I, I'm not casting aspersions on it. That's fine. It's great in most cases that we do this. I think it's perverse when a company like Amazon gets 200 plus communities to prostitute themselves for a uh, move, but that's not a sore subject with me at all, so I'm not going to dwell <laughs> any time on that. So this is the practice, right? This just was announced two weeks ago. The state offered an incentive package worth nearly $8.4 million. Lee County and Sanford came up with an additional $8.3 million, right? And I read that and I say that's all well and good and it's fine. And yes, I know, again, for some of you that would scream to tell me this, they didn't necessarily write checks for this full amount. Some of these incentives are deferred tax collections and things like that. But that helps to put a price value on it, which begs the question, what else could we do with $16.7 million? I'm going to put a pin in that for now, because before we would presume to know the answer to that and prescribe that for another community, we first have to understand what's happening in the state. So I'm going to share some research. I'm going to drop some knowledge bombs uh, today and tomorrow from these three favorite sources of mine, the Economic Innovation Group, bipartisan think tank out of Washington, D.C., the Brookings Institute, which I'm sure all of you know, and then my alma mater at Kaufman. The first thing I'm going to reference is um, the, the uh, Economic Innovation Group, the Distressed Communities Index. This is a scorecard that they made to measure communities across the country based upon these seven criteria of high school diploma, housing vacancy rate, unemployment, uh, change in employment, right? You hear in certain parts, oh, unemployment is floating around 3%. Who here, show of hands, lives in a rural community? Is unemployment only 3% in your community? Nope, right? So we need to understand that. So here's what they did in the most recent uh, study. And North Carolina, you see it, it's that long state on the uh, right there, 22.8%, and we are in the second to last quintile in the country. That means nearly 23%, I'm gonna just say 25% because it's a more impressive number. But a quarter of our citizens in a state that's over 10 million are living with economic distress every day in their life. You could be forgiven if you had a different perception of what that's like. And specifically, let me get really granular with you. This is how it shakes out. There are, in fact, fellow citizens living very different lives to some of the other people in this state. So I know you can look at that and you can kind of figure out where like 95 goes, right? And east of 95, a lot of red over there. Red bad, blue good. More interestingly, even from those, you know, those blue, and there's about 33 of the counties that at least aren't economically distressed, even amongst the blue, all counties between 2007 and 2016, all but 17 counties lost businesses. So what that means is this, right? We have recovery, we have growth, we have opportunity, we have hope happening in smaller and smaller parts geographically. And this is creating a problem for us. There are 53 metropolitan areas that have, in this country, that have a population of a million or more. And of those 53 big metro areas, three quarters are seeing, 75% of those metro areas are seeing all the economic growth. And the rest of the country is sliding behind. If there's one thing we absolutely need to understand, it's this. Distressed communities are disconnected communities. We cannot tolerate policy or practices anymore in the state of North Carolina where some prosper, some get engaged, some have access, and others do not. Full stop. Again, my friends at the Kauffman Foundation say it more eloquently than I can as a simple man of average intelligence. So they said it better in the, when they say fewer startups mean a lower quality of life for Americans. Life is more interesting when everybody's engaged and everybody has an opportunity. Like I said, this is about empowerment. That's why we're going to redefine economic development with entrepreneurship. Because through entrepreneurship, we're going to empower everybody. And it works not only in the state of North Carolina, but across the country, and more to the point, around the world, which is my clever segue to introduce our next speaker.